Thank you, President Al. Um, real privilege to be uh, introducing Dr. Peter Tay, the president of Lancaster Bible College. He has been the president of Lancaster Bible College for almost 16 years. President Al at the table was asking me how I came to know uh, Peter and Paulette, uh, Dr. Tegan's wife, and I'm sure he's quite sorry he asked because uh, our paths have crossed a number of different times. I, I, I just want to, um, as I'm introducing Peter, let you know that uh, he is a man uh, that I think um, epitomizes two character traits. One is high character and the other is excellence. Um, the, Takes and my wife and I had special needs daughters about the same time. And um, Peter and his wife founded a, a ministry called Jessica and Friends to provide housing for autistic and other special needs uh, for children and people. And that's not even on his bio. Uh, those are the kinds of things he has done in the, in the community in the North Lancaster areas for many years. When he tells you about Lancaster Bible College, you quickly see why I call him uh, someone who's constantly in the pursuit of excellence. Uh, I'm on the corporate board at Lancaster Bible College, and I can tell you Lancaster Bible College is not your stereotypical Bible college. Little, little college, gets a few students in that state, um, typically connected with denomination. It's an interdenominational, non-denominational Bible college. Students all over the country, all over the world. Uh, if you ever get the opportunity to go to one of their concerts or one of their plays, it's all done in an excellence that is just hard to describe. So without further introduction, I will allow Dr. Tate to tell you all about my survival college. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for that warm introduction today. And thank you, each one gathered here today, for the work you do on behalf of this community we love called York, Pennsylvania. My wife, Paulette, and I will always be indebted to York, as this is where we came 42 years ago from Denver, Colorado, without children, not knowing a soul. And this is where we raised our four children. This is where, in 1998, we started a nonprofit organization called Jessica and Friends Community, an organization that provides faith-based services for adults with autism and intellectual disabilities. And today, Jessica and Friends Community serves over 90 individuals. This community of York is indeed very dear to our hearts. You can hardly mention higher education today without hearing buzzwords such as innovation, change, reinvention, or transformation. There are more conferences on innovation in higher education than we can literally keep track of, much less attend. There are more reports about innovation in teaching, research, business models, and technology than we can possibly read, much less implement. It's a given that most of us resist change. Most organizations resist change. In fact, many say change is only welcome from a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> the hardworking and deeply committed administrators and faculty of our colleges and universities are not unique in seeking ways to make progress while preserving the status quo. The status quo in higher education, however, is rapidly disintegrating. Tuitions are rising while the unemployment rate is at record highs for recent college graduates. Can you imagine? Today there is over $1 trillion in student debt and then our graduates enter the worst job market in years. As you well know, we live in an age of information super abundance. Every day, 300 billion emails, 200 million tweets, and 2.5 billion text messages go through our digital networks. Last year alone, the world's information base was estimated to have doubled every 11 hours. 
1.5 billion people in the world have personal computers. And today it is estimated that there are 6.5 billion mobile users on the continent. Computers enable new forms of communicating, obviously. They present information as incredibly understandable in previously unimaginable ways. However, like any commodity, information needs a context. Otherwise, we call it unintentionable gibberish. Perhaps no other development has had more effect on the modes of learning for today's college student than the digital revolution. Whereas traditional classroom settings with chalkboards and face-to-face -face interaction between professors and students were the norm for centuries, today's college classrooms are expected to be technologically advanced with state-of-the-art equipment. In addition, the greater demand for online learning has forced Lancaster Bible College to make and consider dramatic changes in our degree programs and in how we deliver student services. The digital revolution raises critical ideological questions about how and where we provide our educational programs and how we prepare 21st century students to learn. It also impacts how we equip our campuses, our classrooms, labs, laboratories, how we support and provide services to our students, to our faculty, to our staff, to our alumni, and ultimately how we compete in a highly competitive higher education environment. Clearly the landscape in higher education is changing. Now more than ever, it is necessary for institutions to assess the risks, the challenges, the opportunities that are before us and develop a unique strategic direction that is congruent to our missions, yet also sets us apart from our competitors. Changes in technology define how we deliver our education at Lancaster Bible College. They define us as educators, and they define our students, even down to how they think and how today our students process learning. Our students have grown up with the internet. They've grown up with laptops and cell phones and tablets and Kindles. I grew up with candles. <laughs> they grew up with candles. They are most comfortable reading a textbook online than they are by reading a hard copy of a textbook. They have different views on communication, on what they want to communicate about, to, and from. You see, education is not just the transmission of information and ideas. Rather, it's the training needed to make use of information and ideas. As information breaks loose from bookstores and libraries and floods into computers and mobile devices, that training becomes more important rather than less important. That is exactly why we consider the faculty at Lancaster Bible College to be coaches and personal trainers for what we call intellectual fitness. We provide individual instruction in how to evaluate and make use of information and ideas, teaching our students how to think for themselves, a rare commodity today. Education at its core requires one mind engaging with another in real time, listening, understanding, correcting, modeling, suggesting, prodding, denying, affirming, and critiquing thought processes. Since our founding in 1933, our mission at Lancaster Bible College has remained constant. Very few institutions 
of higher education can say that after 82 years. Our mission then and today is we educate Christian students to think and to live a biblical worldview and to proclaim Christ by serving him in the church and in society. Our focus is on the student's journey to do something remarkable, to make a difference. Our approach is to equip students to think critically and to apply these skills as they process the information and the ideas available to them through technology. Our faculty and staff have embraced our mission and they wholeheartedly share responsibility in fulfilling our mission. But the changes, the challenges, the opportunities presented by a changing world demand a new way of thinking. Not a new mission, but rather a new approach that is better suited to today's learners. To meet these changing needs with an effective approach, at Lancaster Bible College, we are ensuring that we provide coherent development of online collaborative experiences within all of our degree programs. We are providing an online environment flexible enough to incorporate all the relevant tools to support student collaboration, exactly the way 21st century students learn. And finally, we require that all of our staff are kept up to date with technological, pedagogical, and logical implications of introducing new communication technologies and tools into the teaching and into the learning process. You see, a set of podcasts is the 21st century equivalent of a textbook, not the 21st century equivalent of a college professor or a teacher. Collaborative learning is the key to unlocking this 21st century dynamic of what we call teaching and learning. Collaborative learning, a concept increasingly referred to as flipping the classroom, allows our students at Lancaster Bible College to build their own knowledge through active, personal, engagement, to develop interpersonal and teamwork skills needed so desperately in the workplace today, to develop an understanding of the multiple perspectives needed for living in this multicultural generation because technology has made the globe so much smaller, to engage in the appropriate professional discourse for their discipline and finally, to share their skills and experience to solve more complex problems that they could handle as individuals. Our new learning commons, completed in 2012, ushered in a brand new approach on how Lancaster Bible College supports this new teaching and learning dynamic. We have brought together under one roof in this state-of-the-art 43,000 square foot building all of the departments that support teaching and learning. Our professors are able to help our students use the World Wide Web to access, to process, and apply all of the superabundance of information to their major. It is transforming the field of higher education as we deliver it at Lancaster Bible College. This inquiry-based teaching environment using technology is enhanced by guiding our students through the process of obtaining pertinent online information, synthesizing a variety of media tools, and managing data for different levels of research and methodology. As our students master the art of gathering, analyzing, and applying information, they are achieving greater self-esteem, higher levels 
of critical thinking skills, a higher range of competencies that we are able to offer to future employers. Bill Gates is famous for saying, online education is not the next new thing. It is the now big thing. Biblical online education started at Lancaster Bible College in August of 2005. One year later, the year was 2006, and our entire online education has been fully accredited by all of our accrediting bodies and fully recognized by the Department of Higher Education in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Our first students came from as close as York County to as far away as the United Kingdom. Since those early beginnings, online education has continued to grow. Today, we offer programs to nearly 2,000 students for undergraduate, degree completion, graduate, and PhD programs. These are delivered through 210 fully online courses, 225 blended, and 895 supplemental e-learning courses. In fact, every single one of our students, faculty members, and staff use online education resources in one form or another. Lancaster Bible College Online Education has reached and served students in more than 20 states and more than 15 countries from Central America to Asia. And on the day of March 29, in just a couple of weeks, we will have a complete online program training 4,000 pastors in Uganda on the continent of Africa. 82 years ago, the year was 1933, Lancaster School of the Bible opened with eight students eight students who wanted to train to serve as pastors and missionaries. Today, Lancaster Bible College is the second largest independent accredited college in the United States of America. There are 126 accredited in U.S., and we rank number two. We are fully accredited through the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. We are fully approved by the Department of Education in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Today, at Lancaster Bible College, we offer 47 different academic programs, six undergraduate degrees, eight graduate degrees, and three doctoral level degrees, including a PhD in leadership. Our undergraduate programs include majors such as counseling, education, worship and performing arts, social work, communication, business administration, and the list goes on. Exactly two years ago this month, Lancaster Bible College acquired all of the academic programs of a college and seminary that was in distress. And currently we have recast the vision for that graduate school and seminary, and now they are a part of the umbrella of Lancaster Bible College, and we have a location in Greenbelt, Maryland, just in the shadow of the nation's capital. We currently serve students online all over the world, and we have today seven geographic locations in six states, including Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, Indiana, Florida, and Tennessee. In the last two years, our enrollment has skyrocketed from 1,000 full-time students, which was a milestone in itself. Currently today, we have close to 2,000 full-time students at Lancaster Bible College. Our student demographic is significantly changing. 
It was just a year ago that 25% of our operating budget came from the traditional undergraduate 18 to 23 year old residential student. Just a year later, that number of adult graduate of adult learners has doubled to almost 42%. It has turned our budget on its head. Colleges and universities for many years thought the undergraduate population was the bread and butter. And those colleges and universities that haven't retooled toward the adult learner and the online education are those who are having a lot of distress. In August, a year ago, Forbes magazine evaluated 925 pro uh, private, not-for-profit, four-year colleges and universities with enrollment of 500 and above. Forbes did not tell any of us in higher education they were going to do that. They had access to all of our information, which is very public, and we were quite surprised when in August of last year, they publicly went forth with their report, and Lancaster Bible College ranked in the top 25%. In fact, we were 205 on the list of 500, shocked at the number of colleges that did not make the top 25%. They measured the financial health only of an institution. I conclude this afternoon the best words my students hear from my lectures. In conclusion, <laughs> it is music to their ears. We have found at Lancaster Bible College the proper use of technology and collaboration has made us better. It's made us better by forcing us to reflect on what education is. Identify what only a person can do, and then devote educational time to that. The core task of training minds is very labor intensive. It requires the time and effort of bright, highly trained and motivated individuals. One thing colleges and universities cannot do is pretend that things will always stay the same. Technology is forever changing the face of higher education. The way students learn is changing education. This is coming whether we like it or not. Shakespeare said we curse the darkness or we light a candle. At Lancaster Bible College, we have employed technology to light a candle and to make a difference in the lives of our students and our graduates. In our daily commitment to impart knowledge to our students, we strive to instill in them the core that equips them to use their knowledge well. We have been entrusted with the men and the women who are determining the quality of tomorrow's homes and schools and businesses and communities who will determine the quality of our country for years to come. This trust is not for the faint of heart and its outcome is crucial for the days ahead. I look each of you in the eye this afternoon as business leaders in this community and thank you for the vital support that you are giving to some of the finest institutions in the Commonwealth, which are located right here in York, Lancaster, and in South Central Pennsylvania. Thank you for letting me tell you the Lancaster Bible College story.